Uh, your work has involved uh, looking at the effects of Arctic uh, water, open water, on the flow of the jet stream and uh, weather events in the temperate zone. Mm -hmm. With this new uh, state, as you called it, in the Arctic, are you looking for any kind of uh, uh, unusual or remarkable effects, say, in the, in the coming early winter, fall, uh, as we, we get moving through the next season here? I think we're probably in for a very interesting fall and winter. Um, with this much extra energy that's going to be released into the atmosphere this fall, I don't see how we could not have an interesting winter. And that said, um, it's still very difficult to predict who is going to get more snow, for example, or a cold, snowy winter, and what places are going to have maybe a milder winter. We know that the jet stream is shifting northward. We know that the waves in the jet stream are becoming higher, and whenever that happens, they move more slowly. So whatever weather people are experiencing, it's probably going to last longer, which it tends to increase the probability of extreme events. And so I think... We're going to be in for a very interesting winter, but at this point we can't say where those uh, extremes are going to happen. Can we draw any parallels between the uh, extreme warm events that we saw in North America over the last six months and what, we're, what we've been seeing in the Arctic this summer? Well, the summer patterns, if you're talking about the drought and the heat wave particularly that happened in North America mostly, and remember, that was accompanied by an extremely wet, cold summer in Alaska and the Pacific Northwest, and also a very wet summer in England, in that area. I mean, all these things are connected. But the summer patterns, I don't think, are directly related to ice loss. They're related to um, Arctic warming faster than the rest of the globe. But during the summer months, I think the connection is stronger to the fact that the snow is melting much earlier on land in northern North America and also Siberia. And when you melt that snow earlier, especially in the spring when the sun is very strong, you then expose the soil to the strong sun, which allows it to dry out and warm much earlier than it would. And so it's also contributing to the Arctic warming faster than the, than the temperate latitudes. And so I think this is playing a role in doing the same kinds of things with the jet stream, but in the summer season rather than the fall winter, which is when the sea ice loss has more of an effect.